Hey guys, Travis Phillips here. So before we get into the bulk of this video, I want to talk to you a little bit about this channel and kind of where I think that it's going to go. So we're almost at 500 subscribers. So that's awesome. And uh, if you find value in the content, please go ahead, like subscribe. That'd be great for me to know that um, we're going in the right direction. But as we move forward, I'm going to be a little bit more focused, a little bit more niche than kind of we've previously been. If you look through some of the past videos, they're kind of all over the place. I just been kind of doing whatever came up and really just throwing stuff, you know, against the wall to see what would stick. And uh, overall though, um, I think that we're gonna try to be a little bit more consistent in putting out some videos and also try to be more consistent in the content with a focus on, you know, some finance, some news and just some general lifestyle stuff surrounding that. So anyways, Beyond that, let's get into the bulk of the video. And today we're gonna talk a lot about, and don't mind me, I'm gonna be looking at my notes a little bit here, but uh, we're gonna be talking about the FIRE community and why they get it right and why that might be interesting to you. So if you don't know the FIRE community, what that stands for is financial independence, retire early. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. We'll break down sort of the words in that. Um, even though they're not too crazy, it's just a good idea to get a grasp on what the people in the community actually feel about those words. Um, so the reason this kind of came about is based on, you know, just our, our financial situation in the world really, and in the country, um, mostly, but I'm going to be speaking to America more than anything. And so our current situation is a lot of people depend on what is called social security uh, when you retire. And realistically, what that entails is you work in the system, you work a normal job nine to five, and you pay into the system throughout that time. Uh, when your time comes, when you hit, when you hit the, you know, the magic number, all of a sudden now you're going to be able to withdraw from those benefits. Um, that number currently is 62 and there has been talks about raising it. Um, but this was never supposed to be our retirement, right? It, it was never supposed to be the end all be all. It's a safety net. And the issue is um, what we're running into now is 61% of elderly beneficiaries. This has become their number one source of cash income. That's problematic. So it's gone pretty far beyond what, um, Franklin Roosevelt intended in 1933, which was a safety net for people who didn't have any financial support. That's what its purpose was. And, uh, you know, because of what it's become, many experts are actually believing that it will be completely exhausted. All the coffers will be emptied and we will be without any sort of true safety net as early as the 2030s. So it's really not that far off. And what that means for us, anybody, you know, in my general age range, um, probably people who might be watching this in between 20 and 40, you most likely will not have social security as we know it right now. Are you prepared for that? I hope so. And I hope that, um, you know, that this might enlighten you a little bit as to why it's important to be prepared and also what this community in particular is doing to get you there. Um, but anyways, let me note right here that I'm not a financial expert and any sort of opinion that I have shouldn't be construed as financial advice or investing advice. So don't take it that way. Okay. This is just my opinion and what I kind of feel about this topic and situation. Uh, right. Moving on though, is what is fire and uh, why does it matter to us? So financial independence retire early in general, um, it's about reaching certain milestones in your finances to where you can be considered uh, financially independent. And so while retire early is in the framework, it's not necessarily that you're gonna just quit your job and stop working and you know go stay on a beach somewhere. Now, if you want to, you could, and that's what's awesome about it, but it's not really about that. It's not about just retiring and being done with the world. It's just simply about having financial freedom and flexibility so that you can start to choose what you wanna do with your time. There's a couple ways um, that that you're going to be able to, you know, justify whether or not you are actually financially independent, and that's the goal, right? Financial independence. So the two that we're going to talk about are somewhat repetitive, 
but they're just different ways of looking at it. Uh, first, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your expenses, so I'm assuming that you know what your actual expenses are, and you're gonna multiply that by 25. And when you have that saved, you're technically financially independent. That's pretty awesome. Now, 25 is a large multiple, right? Uh, that's 25 years of expenses that you need to save before you can be considered financially independent. That's gonna sound, when you really start to you know, think through that, it's gonna sound like a mountain that needs to be climbed. And, and in all reality, it is. So this is not easy and it, and it shouldn't be, but um, it's good to be able to quantify what your goals are. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna, our $50,000, now that would mean, you know, if you multiply it by 25, that you would need $1.25 million in savings to be considered financially free. So we're not talking about small numbers, but it's good to quantify that. So the reason why that's the number though, why you can say once you have 1.25 million and 50,000 in expenses, why you can say you're now financially independent is because of another principle, which is called the 4% rule. With the 4% rule, this is sort of a general rule of thumb that retirees use to be able to determine how much money they'll need in retirement as long as um, figuring out this number, right? What is your number? We've heard that before. Um, this is kind of how you go about doing that is with the 4% rule. And in essence, what that means is you've taken this money that you have saved, it's invested in some sort of asset that passively returns you money whether that's real estate or stocks or specifically dividend income growth stocks or ETFs, um, something that is gonna give you a return on your money, right? That's the goal here. And when you do that, you're able to safely withdraw 4% each year without actually hurting your nest egg. This is actually a very conservative number and throughout history, uh, don't quote me on this, okay? But throughout history, I think it's something like 95 or 98% of the time when you run different possibilities of how this could have played out um, from the Great Depression, they, they go all the way back into like, you know, the late 1890s all the way through now. And they do 20 year periods and 30 year periods. And 95 or 98%, I don't remember the exact number, but a crazy amount of the time, if you withdraw 4% each year of your nest egg, you never run out of money, ever. And you actually die with a huge sum of money. And sometimes uh, there's actually a majority of the time, if you're only withdrawing 4%, your nest egg is actually growing that entire time. So not only are you um, able to withdraw the 4% safely, your nest egg has actually grown, uh, sometimes exponentially, depending on you know the time frame. There are also minor changes that they could have made to those time frames where if they had dropped their expenses by some sort of small amount that it would have saved them and so on and so forth. You can see 4% overall, most experts will say, is extremely conservative. Um, and beyond that, uh, running through these scenarios, you'll also see that most of the time you could safely um, withdraw as much as 6 or 7% and still see your nest egg grow. So to give you an idea of you know, 4% and how conservative it is. But um, originally we said, if your expenses were 50,000 and you multiplied by 25, that's 1.25 million. The reverse of that is 1.25 million times 4% is $50,000. And so that's kind of how those two numbers work together to give you an idea. Just because you're now financially independent or uh, you know, a part of the fire community, that doesn't mean that you have to quit your job. It doesn't mean that um, all of a sudden you're no longer going to work. It's actually more likely that you're going to continue to work, which means that you don't necessarily have to withdraw 4% um, and you can let that build or you cannot and you'll be fine either way. And that's really what we're talking about is the flexibility and the benefit of, of being able to get yourself to that point. It's, it's a very, um, there's a lot of freedom that goes into that once you've actually attained it to where you're able to kind of do with your time what you want. And not many people can say that. Um, and that's sort of obviously the major benefit. Uh, so obviously when we start talking about 
you know, that type of savings and, and um, you know, this type of freedom, it might sound a little bit abstract, you know, like something that's not attainable. But in reality, if you're willing to kind of buckle down and uh, be committed, it truly can be attainable for most people, even for, you know, not extremely high income earners. Now, obviously, the less money that you make, the more difficult this is going to be. Uh, but there's a few different ways that people go about this. And it's not all about making a ton of money. So there's a huge movement within this community as well uh, that focuses on frugality and being frugal and being very cost conscious. Um, that's even branched out a little bit to some people who uh, want to cut all expenses at all costs, regardless of the impact that it has on their quality of life, even though they might say that it's not negatively impacting their quality of life. And some others who are more focused on value and, and what do you actually get out of the money that you're spending? I think that's a pretty reasonable way to look at things. Uh, and, and probably it would be more where I align, but there is something to be said for cutting costs at all costs. Um, simply because the math of it says if you're able to cut a hundred dollars a month from your expenses, that's going to drop the number that you need to be financially independent by $30,000. Um, that's, that's pretty significant if you think about it. So a hundred dollars a month, if you can cut a hundred dollars a month from your expenses, well, all of a sudden that's $30,000 less you need to have in savings to be considered financially independent. And that, you know, you could, pr not everybody, but most people could probably trim off a couple hundred dollars in expenses by simply getting rid of some extraneous things that they don't actually need or some subscriptions that you might have that you just haven't canceled yet. Or, you know, there's a few different things that you can do, um, but we'll get into that more as well. Uh, but the other side of that story, as opposed to cutting costs, is um, some people will also just choose to live off of you know a, a small portion of their paycheck and as they get raises they don't increase their uh, living standards this is extremely important if you're able to increase the amount of money that you make and not increase your living standards you can exponentially um, grow your savings rate and that will help drastically at meeting that number or getting to that number uh, that will be the number you need for financial freedom, it's different for everybody. So how do we get there? What are some concrete steps that you can take to increase your chances of becoming financially independent? Step one is really about stepping back and thinking through this process and asking yourself, are you really willing to be committed to to this goal, to this end game, because if you're not, it's extremely unlikely that you'll be able to attain it. Um, you have to truly choose that this is what you want. And it has to kind of become a lifestyle. So uh, you might even equate it to like some people who become paleo or vegan or uh, something along those lines. You don't have to be, you know, like that. You know what I mean? But um, it's not, it wouldn't be wrong to say that you really have to commit, that it has to be a lifestyle. And so you need to ask yourself if you're willing to commit and if you're willing to actually uh, to do that. And, and that has to be step one because the rest of it doesn't really matter if you're not or if you're unsure. Um, beyond that, I think that before you start cost cutting or even saving, you really have to have a solid, solid budget. The budget is gonna be incredibly important because bad data in, bad data out, you have to know where your money's going. If you don't know where your money is or what you're spending it on, you can't really make adjustments to help you get there. So if you have a budget, go over it again. Make sure it's rock solid. If you don't have a budget, it's time to make one. This, this is probably going to be one of the most important things because when you start seeing what you're spending money on, you're going to go, wow, I can't believe that I spent you know, X amount of dollars on eating out when I spent X amount of dollars on groceries and I end up throwing away a third of it. So you really start to get an idea of your expendable uh, you know, cash that, that you're kind of spending without reason um, simply because you have it. And if you also don't have a purpose for it, it becomes a lot easier to spend those dollars as well. And that's incredibly important to note is that once you create a purpose for dollars, 
they become a tool as opposed to something to get rid of uh, or just something you have. You really need to view these things as tools that are going to get you to the goal that you want to achieve. So budget, it's, it's going to be important. I'm not going to go much further than much further than that on it, but um, it is incredibly important. You really can't bypass this step and you really can't uh, overestimate how important it is to have a solid budget that, you know, structured in a way that you're going to be able to actually keep up with it. Because if you mark down every single little detail, but you don't keep track of it monthly, that's not going to help you. So if you need buckets of things where you, you put um, recurring subscriptions into a bucket and you just know what that cost is and you're able to just confirm rather than tracking each, you know, Netflix, Hulu, whatever have you, you know, do what you have to do that's going to work that you can actually keep up with it. That's going to be important. The last step, and and this is really the last step to starting, right? So there, there are exponential steps beyond this. But um, I'm going to link something in the description for you guys. It's an awesome sort of summary of what they call the 10 pillars of financial freedom. Uh, it's, it's on choosefi.com. I can't even say that I 100% agree with every single word in the article. But as a starting point to get an idea of, you know, some steps that you can take to really uh, reel in your expenses or get a jump start on becoming financially free, uh, it's a great place to start. Um, their pillar one is actually one of the things that I kind of disagree with, though it's not like they're completely wrong. Um, and that is to invest in low cost index funds. Now, there is nothing wrong with investing in low cost index funds. So don't get me wrong there, right? Like don't don't think that I'm telling you like don't go invest in those funds. They're awesome and they are a great tool to invest in. Okay? So don't make that mistake. If you're not like like stock savvy or you're not in the market and you're not analyzing companies, you don't know how to read a balance sheet, um, then it's probably a good idea for you to invest in that. It'd probably be uh, actually very prudent of you to do that. Um, specifically low cost because that's one of the few things you can control uh, when somebody else manages your money. It can be very expensive to have somebody else manage your money. And instead of sitting down with somebody and, and saying, this is what I wanna do, and they're gonna charge you 2% or whatever they're gonna charge you, a low cost index fund might be as low as 0.01% you know, fees per year. And uh, you're gonna have exceptional results simply because you haven't spent 2% uh, paying somebody to manage the money for you. It's still professionally managed. Um, it's very similar to uh, like what most people understand is a mutual fund, but it's slightly different than that. These are ETFs, exchange trade funds, um, and they're very easy to access. There's all types of research you can do. They're good tools. I think that you might leave a little bit of money, a little bit of returns on the table, uh, as opposed to learning about the market and investing in companies and Specifically with me, I uh, choose to employ a strategy called dividend growth investing. There will be videos on that later. Um, and we will actually get into the 10 pillars uh, in this article in other videos uh, coming you know, to the channel here soon. But if you're interested in learning more about some concrete steps you can take, you can get a sneak peek by going to that link in the description and read through. Um, you'll be able to find a, a lot of different articles that they have that uh, talk about financial independence and um, different ways that you can uh, make steps towards getting there. So that would definitely be a relevant you know, educational piece for you to start sort of look through and then also come back here. And if you enjoyed this video, you can click like and subscribe and uh, there will definitely be more and we'll kind of dive in. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section. But uh, you know, we started this talking about sort of this dream of financial independence and the freedom that that can bring. And it's attainable, it really is, it's quantifiable. And when you can quantify something, that means you can take concrete steps to get there. And that's exactly what we just kind of walked through a little bit. It comes down to controlling your spending, which is not an easy task, it's difficult and you really have to commit. The path isn't easy, but the reward is pretty great. You're gonna gain back years of your life that you get to do what you want to do on your own time.
that's incredibly important and it is worth seeking. So I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Uh, I hope to talk to you soon and uh, just be on the lookout for more videos. Thanks.